Hello, it's Yitta, and today I'm actually finally filming a video which has been requested a few times by people, and that is how to read more. So, especially if you're a student like me, um, you will have like limited time on your hands and fitting in reading into a life can sometimes be a little bit difficult. So I thought I'd just give you some tips on how you can read more and make it easier to implement reading into your life consistently. So my first tip is to set aside time for reading every single day. Find a time that works for you and just make it non-negotiable, like you have to read in that time. It could be as little as 10 minutes a day or it could be an hour a day. Um, for example, I will read minimum 20 to 30 minutes before I go to sleep, but I also tend to read whilst I'm eating breakfast and also any breaks that I have from studying or even just any time that I have in the day spare, I will just try to read. Or alternatively, if your schedule changes a lot from day to day, you could just say, okay, read at least 30 minutes a day. Or you could set a minimum number of pages to read. So for example, read at least 50 pages a day. But either way, just setting aside some time for reading and dedicating that period of time for reading, um, you will just be more likely to read more books. And then the second tip, which is kind of linked to the first one, um, when you have found that time for reading, when you are reading in that set time, make sure that you're limiting your distractions. So don't have the TV on in the background or your phone next to you because then you might just not be as focused when you are reading a novel. And the idea is just to kind of make the most of the time that you do have for reading. And then probably I would say the most important tip, if you could even call it that, is just to read books that you enjoy. Now this might sound really silly, but find the genres that you love to read and just read those genres. Obviously it's important to read outside of what you love and you know, try new genres, try nonfiction if you don't read that very often, try the classics because sometimes books will surprise you and it's important to read outside of your comfort zone so that you can continue learning. But at the same time, if you know that there's a genre you love, for example, you love thriller mysteries, then just read loads of those. Because if you're reading within the genre that you love, it's more likely that you'll enjoy the book. And if you enjoy the book, you are more likely to read more because you will be actively trying to find time to read as much as you can because you're so invested in the characters and the plot. So by reading books that you genuinely love and genres that you genuinely enjoy, then you'll automatically see an increase in your reading. I say that this is really important, but I really should follow this tip more often. And I'm really trying to. So for example, this year, I've really been getting into reading fantasy, but sometimes say if I've read six fantasy books in a row, I sometimes feel a bit guilty for reading so many because sometimes they are less kind of academic um, than let's say classics, or I'm just very aware of the fact that I haven't read other genres. So I'm like, oh, maybe I should read a play script now to break this up. But in reality, if I'm genuinely not feeling like reading another genre, then I should just stick with the ones that I am enjoying. And that kind of brings me on to my fourth tip, which is to read multiple books or kind of mood read. So I am always reading multiple books, which I didn't used to do, but I've gotten into the habit of doing it now. And I do understand that that's not for everyone. Some people find it confusing. But the way that I do it is I will always be reading a book with my sister. So I, I re I'm currently reading the series Unfortunate Events to them. And then I'm also obviously reading a book um, for myself for pleasure. And occasionally if I'm reading, let's say, a really dense classic or a very kind of detailed non-fiction book, I will then also be reading like an easier fiction, like YA novel on the side to have a break from this dense book. And then tip number five is to always bring a book with you. So wherever you go, even if you know that you'll never get a chance to read where you're going, just put a book in your bag because sometimes you will end up having time, even if you didn't think you would you know, during travel, or let's say you end up having to wait around for a meeting, then you can just bring out the book. And even if you only end up reading three pages, that's more than you would have read if you hadn't brought your book with you. So just bring a book everywhere you go and try to slot it in wherever you can in your day. And my next tip is to have a to be read list or kind of wish list of books that you want to read. 
Um, and by having a TBR list, you're just never out of options for reading. You're never in this kind of book limbo. When you've finished one book, until you decide what you're going to read next, you could have been reading in that period of time. And so by having this list of books that you know you want to read, you're never out of books. And you're just constantly having a book on hand. Um, but if you're struggling to find book recommendations to create your list, and this kind of brings me up to tip number seven, which is to watch book recommendation videos on YouTube. Um, get into Bookstagram and Booktok and just surround yourself with book stuff, essentially. Um, I watch a lot of Booktube which gives me so many recommendations. And then I, I follow some bookstagrammers on Instagram, which also gives me inspiration. I don't actually have TikTok, but on Instagram, there are so many reels um, filled with like book recommendations. And I have quite a few videos about books on my channel. So if you do ever need some recommendations or want me to film a rec more recommendation videos, just let me know and I can do that. Um, but alternatively, you could also, um, this is tip eight, um, you could also go on Goodreads, which I would highly, highly recommend to anyone. I use it all the time and I'll link my Goodreads down below. The way I could describe Goodreads is it's essentially a social media for books. You can get loads of recommendations on Goodreads, but you can also follow your friends and see what they're reading and that could inspire you to read those books but you can also create a TBR list on them as well as set a reading challenge for the year. So I've done this for two years now. Last year, I set myself the challenge of reading 50 books, which I completed. And this year I'm doing 65 books. But every time that you complete a book, you add it to your list and you can kind of see your progress on the challenge, which can be really motivating sometimes if you're aiming for something but obviously you don't have to do this. And if you think that will just add unnecessary pressure to yourself, then obviously don't do that. But it is just an idea of a way that you could potentially read more. And then the next tip is more specifically for the way to read books. So I would highly, highly recommend using Kindle. Whether you actually have or buy a Kindle or just use the Kindle app on your phone or computer, Kindle is just absolutely incredible. I love using my Kindle, um, but there are probably two main benefits to using a Kindle. So the first benefit is that Kindle books are much cheaper than physical books. Most classics are free on Kindle, which is incredible, but even other modern fiction books are a lot cheaper and will normally be around four pounds. But I once purchased three books on Kindle for under three pounds, which I think is pretty affordable and so cool. And then the second benefit is that Kindle books tend to be a little bit more practical than physical books. So if you're bringing books with you on the go, um, Kindle books are easier because you don't need to worry about damaging the books. Um, but also I quite like reading before I go to bed and I like turning the light off and actually lying down and you can do that with the Kindle. But with your book, you have to keep the light on and it's just a bit uncomfortable to lie down. You kind of have to sit. Um, which is why I sometimes prefer reading on my Kindle. But obviously there is an enjoyment to reading physical books and the way they smell and feel and sound. But it's up to you whether you read on Kindle or physical books. It's just an idea. And then kind of leading off from that, you could also read, well, listen to books on Audible. Recently, I've been using Audible a lot more frequently. In the beginning, I got a free trial, which came with two free books. So if you're not sure if you'll like listening to books instead of reading them then do get the free trial but eventually my mum decided that she wanted to get a subscription to audible my mum is a much slower reader than i am and reading books physically uh she just got sometimes frustrated because she felt like she was stuck on the same book for a really long time but with audible books she is reading so much faster and reading so much more and she really enjoys audible so if it's your speed of reading that's stopping you from reading more, then you can always go to Audible books. But if you can't afford a Audible subscription, you can also always go to YouTube because you can actually find a lot of books on YouTube as audiobooks. Then tip number 11 is a tip which I think I need to follow more myself. And that is that it's okay 
not to finish a book and it's okay to put it down, put it aside and read a different book. If you're reading something and you're just not enjoying it or it's just going so slowly and you just can't get in the hang of it and you end up stuck on this book for weeks or even months, you need to remind yourself that it is perfectly acceptable and perfectly fine to put the book down and find another book to read. You might come back to that book in a year's time, you might not, but it doesn't matter because just because you started the book, it doesn't mean that you need to finish it. I do this so much. And the majority of the time when I have a reading slump, that is the cause of it. The fact that I'm just stuck on a book. So you would solve your problems if you just put the book down and read something else. And then the last two tips are not really tips. They're more just reminders for you. Remember why you chose to read. Why do you want to read more? Reading is not something that should be forced. You shouldn't be making yourself read if you're not enjoying it just so that you could reach a certain goal. Books are something that should be enjoyed and cherished. If you're not enjoying reading books, then that could be because you just haven't found the right genre of books for you. And that brings me back to tip number three, which is to find genres that you enjoy, find authors that you love reading and then just read them. And finally, remember that reading 10 books in a year is just as valid as reading 100 books in a year. I think when you see other people reading, you know, 130 books, um, whether that's in real life or watch, watching YouTube, there can be this pressure that you feel like you should do that too. But everyone is at their own reading pace and that's why you should just never compare the amount that you read with someone else's. This video isn't about how to read 50 books in a year. It's not about the number, it's more about the quality and enjoyment of your reading. Um, the tips are about how to read more than you already are and just read more consistently in your life. So yeah, I hope that these tips helped you in some way and I encourage you to go and take a day out for reading. I did this last week, I decided to just sit down and read Shadow and Bone in a day and I filmed it so if you haven't watched it already, it is on my channel. But um, yes, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.